All right, we are here. Welcome to our biggest uh, biggest mega draft of the year, top eight player of the year mega draft for the for the big biggest title that we have here on the AGL server. Uh, Jack's going to be with me today. And uh, how do you feel about the cards we're looking at here? I, I think I might know, but well, you know, given that they're from a certain set, you you probably know how I feel about them already. Um, <laughs> but. You know, there's a couple of decent cards here. I like Jeskai Elder a lot. I like Abzan Battle Priest. Um, not a lot to be seen from the commons here, really. Yeah, so our feature drafter here is a Dan A. Beatdown Bringer. We are drafting seven packs. Each one uh, is a set that we played for a full league this year. Uh, they were chosen in random order. We're starting here with Kanzatark here, and... Uh, while I might shy away from first picking a three-color card, I know Dan wants his decks to be as powerful as possible. And Abzan Ascendancy is an extremely powerful card. Right? Yeah, Pump up your own it, team, get 1-1 get one, one flyers. He says, let me take the power card, and I'll, I'll make the mana work as we go. Yeah. It's always a little bit risky to, to pick a three-color card, but if there's anyone to do it, I think it will be Dan. Yeah, I think it's close there. I mean, most of the sets do have fixing... So there, there's that. Um, Abzan Battle Priest would have probably been the card that I might have gravitated towards just because it's one color. And um, a lot of these sets will have plus one counters to go with it. So that's one of the things that might, might be able to carry through through the sets. Um, yeah, just to run down our players here. We have, uh, we have seven league winners here among the, the top eight people who qualified for Player of the Year Mega Draft. The eighth one is Thomas C., who has only been around for a few leagues. And has been very close to winning one of them. So, uh, you know, these are all, these are eight of our best players straight up, and they earn their spots here by uh, winning leagues and performing well all year. And uh, Dan's taking some time to think about his second pick here and says, I like the, I like the first Abzan card. Maybe I like the second. Makes sense to me. I mean, five mana, four, four, that throws a couple counters around, can't go wrong. I mean, you can if you can't have the mana cast it, but. Yeah, looks like he switched over to, to the Necropolis Fiend, which, I mean, it's a powerful effect. I always found that even even with Delve, I always felt that was overpaying for this this card. And then if you want to activate it, it requires exiling even more cards. But, I mean, it is powerful. It's just, uh, it was slow even in a slow set. <laughs> yeah, nine minutes a lot with Delve. Um, it just, there's going to be games where, where it's going to rot in your hand for a while and you just won't get there. Yeah, absolutely. The card he selected now is a card that has stood the test of time. We we still get versions of this card uh, today, and they're they're usually among the best tricks in the set. That being the feat of resistance. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just an obvious pick here. You're you're always going to run that if you're white. Yeah, he looked for a moment at the disowned ancestor. That card did pull its weight in in the cons limited, but uh, as a standalone card, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be too excited about grabbing it. But this card does stand up, like I said, to the trick. Like, like even as recently as, uh, what, OTJ, we had uh, take up the shield, which is, uh, you know, in in this long line of effects that, that, that we see here. March Machines, we got the same thing, but it had colorless stuck on it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's effect still used today, and it's still just good. You know, the protection also, like, saves it from removal, but also sometimes it's just, like, Gives you lethal just randomly, right? Like they have two red creatures, and you're just like, okay, well, cool. Yeah, I mean for sure. I, I, I had uh, four of them in Archon's Tarkir League, and uh, definitely it was it was good to sneak fast one of people. Yeah, absolutely great card. Looks like he wants to maybe stay in the white realm here with Watcher of the Roost. Card card is a nice performer. It's nothing special, but uh, solid card. I mean, you've got to imagine if you're the players at these table, you've got to be thinking that a lot of these cards aren't going to make your deck. Yeah. yeah um, definitely a power level dip compared to what we're going to be getting into with the other sets, which are uh, you know, pretty close together in power, a couple more powerful, a couple less, but this is definitely an outlier. The one thing I hate about Watcher of the Roost and that whole cycle is you get priority when you're tapped out. It's, yeah. Uh, so easy to read on Arena. I mean, you know, it was, uh, none of the morphs in that cycle were like game changing, but it was still like, Still an annoying thing to play with. <laughs> the big one was Ruthless Ripper, because you can see, like, oh, I shouldn't swing into that Death Touch yeah. because of the priority with the, um, you know, black mana. So Warden of the Eye is a powerful uh, effect, whether he wants to dip into a bunch of colors here. I mean, early in the draft is the time to do that. 
Uh, there's a piece of fixing here. There's a couple other solid playables. But like I said, Dan, I think, uh, is a power level first kind of guy and then figure out how to get as many of these cards in later responsibly. But uh, his picks are going to trend towards power more than trend towards safety, I think. But he perhaps decides he wants a land here. And I, I think lands are nice because they're going to be one of the more likely cards that you'll end up running from the set. So it feels good to pick them up early. Yep, every land, every non-basic land you have that, that makes your mana base better just is so much better than a card that you might put in your deck. Exactly. Nothing too good here. I'd be surprised to see most of these cards in anyone's deck, but uh, maybe he, he finds something uh, useful to take. I don't hate grabbing the Naturalize. I mean, you've got some enchantment and artifact theme sets in there, right? LCI and OTJ's got artifacts. It might be nice to have for the sideboard. Yeah, it looks like he may agree. I mean, it's a, it's a little hard to pick up a sideboard card, but again, uh, this is definitely the least powerful of all the sets. Despite my, my adoration of this set, I can't deny that the power is a far cry from what we see today. So grabbing a sideboard card is probably better than any of these other middling choices. Yeah, I agreed. Okay, interesting here. Bitter Revelation, I mean, we basically get this effect for three now, so this is not too far off of uh, the type of stuff we see today. And, uh, you know, nice, nice little two-for-one, uh, dump some cards in the graveyard. I, I think, I, you know, I think some of the sets that we're going to deal with uh, don't mind uh, you filling up your graveyard. So we have sets with uh, Collect Evidence, we have sets with uh, Descend. So, uh, you know, putting cards in the graveyard has, uh, has some upside here. Even though it's a bit overcosted, yeah. If you don't find anything else, I think you'll be perfectly okay with running that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these cards, again, like like we're saying, not too much to say. It takes something that might end up in the sideboard. I mean, Erase is much worse than, uh, than Naturalize because it only hits one type of card. So, I mean, look, he's got both halves of uh, Naturalize. You got Erase and you got Shatter. Yeah, I think I think he's just bemoaning sort of the, the lack of main deck playables in Comms Attack here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, for better or worse, it's part of it's part of what it is. You know, this is how they design sets back in the day. Today, they just make modal cards and say, well, instead of having to put three different cards in a set, we just combine them all on one and let people play with them. Yeah, and I think that's nice to kind of have options. When you, when you look at Shatter, you say, okay, destroy an artifact. I can't run that. But something like, you know, Return from Nature might be a little more main deckable. Yeah, Return from Major, you never know when you can nab something from the graveyard as well as a useful uh, artifact or enchantment. Uh, might be looking at Throttle here. I mean, it's it's. I mean, bad removal is still removal, but this is uh, this is pretty poor on uh, well, the uh, range of the Throttle that you're happy to run. Yeah. Long Shot Squad, again, doesn't quite measure up to what we get today, but, uh, you know, it, it had its place in the format. Giving reach to potential multiple creatures can stretch the game out and go long. And I know I know, I know, know Dan likes games to go long. You know, he says, the longer the better. Let me accrue advantage. Let me take over the game. And uh, Long Shot Squad something that might contribute to that. But, yeah, I mean, that's... Um, anything that can block flyers, if you need it, you need it. Um, interesting, we haven't seen really any of the... It's super powerful commons cons is known for. I assume people are snapping up treasure cruises immediately. Yeah, treasure cruise. Uh, as far as creatures, there's like Anok Bonkin and a couple others that were like really, really high performers. I, you know, most of these players, uh, a lot of these players did play when cons was out, and if not, played you know, when it came on Arena last year. Yeah, and you know we've got our, our highest quality caliber of players here. They're they're not passing uh, cards like that if they can help it. Yeah, I mean this is this is about the toughest eight players you could you could put around a draft table for <laughs> on our server. And I mean they earn they earn their spot through battling the whole year. They earn their spot through getting uh, high finishes in our Player of the Year tournament. And uh, now we're looking at Lost Cairns of Ixalan. So back to uh, more more recent times here, and uh, not that many great options, but a few okay cards to be to be had here. Yeah, that rare was. It wasn't great in LCI. You know, I'm not sure if it'll play any better in a Chaos context, but I, I didn't love that. Whale well, Forgotten, even in set. None of those effects are good enough on their own, and Descend 8 is, is a lot to ask. So, 
yeah. that wasn't a premium card. Blue Black just wasn't a deck that was uh, was a big part of that format. If he wants to stick with what he has, I mean, there's Bitter Triumph or Petrify as removal. You know, so far it looks to be trending white or black. That could change. We are very, very early in the process. Yeah, but, you know, those are, are perfectly acceptable pieces of removal. I never hate having those cards in my deck. Yeah, two mana removal that basically deals with anything. Yeah, sign me up. Let's see. He, he also might have eyes for the, the scavenger there, that raccoon. It'll team up well with uh, any, any raccoons he picks up from Bloomboro, but uh, he goes for the instant speed, you know, unconditional removal here. Pretty simple. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, th I mean, th this card was a six-mana sorcery in Konzatar here, right? <laughs> that, you know. How good can it be? <laughs> this Kutzel plays um, pretty well with, with, you know, his counter stuff he picked up. Well, I guess he didn't He didn't end up grabbing that uh, ornament corpse, did he? No, he, he went for the, the Fiend, which he's already put in the sideboard? Or, no, or maybe not, okay. I mean, yeah, it's, it's an expensive card. Runelurker Bat was a nice one. Um, nice role player. Not too many other like standouts here. He's he has, does have his eye on the land. Kutzil was good. That ability actually of opponents not being able to cast up during combat is extremely relevant. It just makes your oh, yeah. very, very safe. Like most people read it for the, the card draw thing. I'm just like, nah, I, I like the first line of text. If I draw a card from it, cool, but three mana three three that just says no to anything my opponent tries to do when I'm attacking. I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, they they can't they can't hold up instant speed card advantage. They can't counter my spells. Like I'm in. Yeah, Rune Lurker Bat seems to be the the safer pick. It's one color. It's just a good card. Flying Lifelink, very very nice. Little Other thing is you descended. It'll play nicely with Bloomboro Bats as well. Yeah, again, like we we see now seeding in these little creature types here, like. Like, they knew what they were doing with Bloomberg. They said, like, we want to see the other ones so that, you know, for constructed purposes. So we see bats. We saw a raccoon earlier. Like, we we do see a lot of things seeded in for the sets to combine with each other. Another one is a lot of the lizards in uh, Bloomboro had uh, had outlaw creature types Yep. to play with uh, stuff from OTJ. So if people are picking up cards that care about outlaws, they may be able to, you know, slightly be more likely to... To activate them, but uh, for now, I think he's got his mind on this uh, very, very good rate to drop here, Iron Paw Aspirin. Someone might be very happy to see that second well, the Forgotten. Or the second Kutzil as well. He's, he's looking at Kutzil saying maybe, maybe. Okay, yeah, I'm just I mean, going to pass, Passing two of them is a sign. Kutzil doesn't really... Uh, what's good about it is that it... It's a two-color card that doesn't say, like, you have to do something specific to the set, which a lot of the gold cards are, like, set-specific. This one's just like, yeah, just play magic. <laughs> just attack your opponents. <laughs> yeah, you got you got creatures with power bigger than their base power? Well, good, there's, like, 40 ways to do that. You'll probably have one. Perfect, yeah. We see we see some of them in this pack, too, with the uh, Explorer's Cache. But uh, I think he's got his eye on one of the white cards here. He's he, uh, He's firmly looking to be white right now. I don't know if I love that Tinker's Tote when you're not drafting a bunch of LCI. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that's the worst carrot cake I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, what do you mean? I mean it doesn't, doesn't scry one? <laughs> it was a super, super good role player in that set. A, not This is a card when you take it out of its environment. I think it gets a little bit worse. The rate's just not super, super strong. Yeah, I agree. Again, like, still, still mm, a good card, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's not as relevant as it was in LCI. You know, you're not going to have as much craft stuff or whatever. Yeah, a lot of the success in Mega Draft, and it's it's hard to ascertain, is like taking taking cards out of their set, right? Tinker's Tote was a really high performer in that set. Pull it out in a Mega Draft, it might not be as good, but there are other cards that maybe were underperformers in their set that, you know, it just didn't jive with what the set was doing. Put in your Mega Draft deck, and it's going to perform great. So I think a lot of success can be found from uh, being able to evaluate that during the draft and pick up those hidden gems that people may not be seeing. Exactly. So without That's... without a great white or black choice, he went for just, I think it was that big big old dinosaur there. <laughs> Six minus seven, mean... seven, scry two. I mean, yeah, pretty good. 
here's a good reason to have artifacts. I mean, Master's Guide Mural was incredible in LCI, and I can't imagine it'll be that much worse on its own. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, the the six five seven seven Far Cry from Kanzu Tarkir, where we got a six mana six five with no further <laughs> text on it, but never mind. Uh, Master's Guide Mural, yeah, I mean, great card on its own, makes a four four. Uh, when you flip it, it makes a 4-4 four, four right away, right, without anything else. And then because it enters, after yeah. that is just, uh, it's just kind of free. Wow. I love Lodestone Needle. That's one of my okay. favorite cards. Okay. He's starting to, to notice perhaps uh, an open color, maybe. We'll see. I mean, he, he set himself up to, to be white here, possibly. I mean, uh, Bitter Triumph is a card you could splash if, if it comes up and... Uh, most of it was just really good. Having that, uh, just being able to explore every single turn, was such a such a key. It's likely that it, it'll prevent you from flooding out, just from kind of getting your land draws out of the way. If you're really unlucky, you still can. But and so cheap, so cheap to play. And what is it? Three stun counters, I think, on it. Put two stun counters. Stun counters. Oh, two. Yeah, still great. Okay, I mean, Sanj Kermit plays nicely with some of his last picks, and at worst, yeah. it's just you drop. You're not going to really be picking up pirates elsewhere, but uh, artifacts, uh, you know, he may have a fair share. Again, a couple of the sets lean a bit more into artifacts, but uh, a lot of them don't really don't really care about them okay. at all. Well, he's got his whale back. I wonder if he's going to be looking at picking it up now that he's got some blue. Yeah, I mean, if you can get all three, it's really good. But again, it takes a lot of work. At sorcery I mean, speed, too, yeah, it's, it's rough to have just one of those effects at sorcery it's not even it's like it's draw a card they discard and you bounce something i mean those are all good but it's a lot of work like at that point in the game that effect might not have have the intended effect that it might have earlier in the game yeah so it looks like he's no i'll, I'll pass on it grab away laying pirates okay interesting that he's, that he's taking this direction sort of leaning into artifact slash pirates and Hoping, hoping maybe the future sets will give him at least enough to, to go or along with that. Because stuff like Staunch Crewman and Wailing Pirates, you can't really just put in your deck. Like, they're just not going to do anything. So you absolutely have to be able to to trigger their abilities. Yeah. I mean, I don't hate it. Artifacts are a card type. They exist in other sets. You know, I, I trust that Dan will be able to pick up, uh, you know, enough decent artifacts in the, the last five packs to kind of make this angle work. Yeah, I mean, if he wants, uh, if he wants an uh, okay artifact, he can take the landmark. I can't quite remember what the creature on the backside was, but uh, I mean, it's as cheap as it gets for one mana here, and you get a scry too. I think it's um, it's a one four flyer that that when it attacks, it throws something else. Oh yeah, sure, why not? Sounds like, oh, right. I mean, it was the it was a bounce spell? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, it gives an artifact, kind of, kind of plays into what he's going for. Okay. All right, so he's saying starting, like, starting to weed out the black cards and say I, I might be settling in here to this uh, to an Azorius type of deck. Azorius artifacts, hoping to uh, hoping to to roll high on future packs and get some cool looking stuff. Up next, we got Bloomborough, which uh, was not a uh, a great set for white blue, but I mean there are individual white and blue cards that can be very good. Just uh, the gold cards probably won't be too appealing potentially yeah and they don't it doesn't really bloomberg is going to be kind of a weird archetype in that or a weird set in that it doesn't play super well with a lot of the other sets just because their mechanics were so tribal yeah self-reflection I, I it's a really cool and unique card it's just it was uh it was too slow for lci but uh the couple times i played that just making copies of the chupacabra echo and whatnot i mean the card has a lot of power in it just was was a little too slow for for its format, but feels like a damn card too. Sure. <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, we got a we got a nice rare here, and on yeah. color, and just great, great card. Starfall Invocation. Of course, uh, we're talking about Rude, right? I mean, he 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 carried one of these in his uh, in his top eight Bloomborough uh, deck, the deck. Uh, well, for the regular portion of the league. I mean, yeah, you you never feel bad it. Having a five mana board wipes unconditional is great, and then you got a good creature. Cool, give your opponent a card. You got it back. Yeah, just slam dunk pick here. Looking at the other cards, I mean, uh, not too much you can expect to to wheel back to him here. 
I, I, yeah. I, that fish, despite being hard to cast, I think towards the end of the format, people found homes for it, but a uh, very, very difficult card to make use of uh, in a vacuum. In Bloomborough, you could actually reasonably expect it to wheel. I think our our players here recognize that it is actually just a pretty powerful card, despite being out of cast, and I wouldn't expect to see it come back. Yeah, someone someone's going to scoop that up, uh, whether they play it or not, we don't know, but I don't think uh, seven other people are going to let that slip through. Yeah. Wow, okay, all well, right. Yeah, this is where we see the Bloomborough cards, like, you know... I mean, I think Jackdaw Savior stands on its own just because it doesn't care about creature types. It cares about flying. I mean, just, just a 3 mana 3-1 flyer that gets back a 2-drop when it dies. I mean, that's incredible. <laughs> like, in, in Bloomborough, you'd be windmill slamming this quest caller, but it, it's not going to play quite as well outside of set. And I mean, He's got a bat, he's got a bird, but uh, I don't think he can, <laughs> he can reliably have that card be impactful. Yeah. Whereas the Savior just having a pretty good rate on a flyer, plus that upside of, hey, your flyers die, get something back. It's in the battlefield, yeah. too, right? Yeah, it comes directly into play, yeah. So it gets back a two-drop or a one-drop, and uh, if it does nothing but that for the game, I mean, you still you still found a great deal. So this is what we mean when, you know, we're looking for cards that can stand by themselves from Bloomborough. I mean, Intrepid Rabbit also uh, very much stands by itself, as does the Strike Force, so uh, other white players will, will get get good cards from this pack. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, if he was looking to splash Bitter Downfall, he can definitely look to splash his spell with, yep. with no other really viable cards in white or blue. Yeah, I don't hate picking up a 3-tree mascot if he's looking to splash, but, I mean, just having such good removal like that is going to be... A make or break for some players. Yeah, this is, yeah. Th these are removals worth splashing for. Two mana, kill anything. One mana symbol, like you know. The, the, these are the things we do want to pick up and splash. Yeah, because exactly. Because they're good at any point of the game. You do. You have it on turn two. Good. You have it on turn eight. You probably still want it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll see if he gets enough artifacts to make some of those other cards work, but. Uh, I think he's starting to at least settle into white very much, and then he's feeling yep. out what else he wants to do. And uh, I would say it's pretty close between Intrepid Rabbit and Nettle Guard. I really like having that that effect, you know, that naturalize or disenchant effect on a creature that just can attack and block until you need it to do that. I don't know if Intrepid Rabbit will be as good in a Mega Draft format as it was in Bloomborough, just because of the way the game's played out, but it can't be bad, so... Yeah, you you can't imagine that a card like that's going to be bad. You know, it's it's yeah. obviously not going to be as good as it was in Bloomborough, but as good as it was in Bloomborough was like the best common in the set, so it can't really get better than that. <laughs> yep, absolutely great card. When your opponent curved out with that, you're just you're, <laughs> you, you you had few options. Yeah. All right. So yeah, starting to settle in still. Focusing on taking white cards when when possible, right? Doesn't doesn't have too many blue cards, right? If you see something else in the next uh, few picks, you know, he there, there's still room to to move into some other type of, of build. But uh, I, I like the look of Life Creed Dealer here. It's a nice it's a nice two drop. It has flying. Seeing a higher claw coming pick five has got to be crazy signal because that card on its own is just you don't need other lizards for that. It's insane by itself. Yeah, it's it's hard it's hard to pick that with the with the start he's had, but uh, yeah. he, he may just decide it's powerful enough to uh, to go for over a life green duo, which is like just like a you know okay role player. We're we're pack three out of seven, so it's getting to the point where players should kind of start locking into their colors. But I think seeing a a great red card and pick five has got to be, you know, triggering some alarms for dancing. Like, hey, should I be moving into this? He says, no, I'll, I'll stick to white. Someone else can have the hard claw. Absolutely. I mean, Life Creed Duo, it looked like it was just a life gain card, but I found that to be like pretty good in most decks. Like It was just a nice effect. Ooh, my boy has made an appearance here partway through yep. our, uh, our Bloomborough pack, and uh, he says 1-1 uh, one, one draw card? Yeah, it's a little hard to cast. Eh, well, we'll make it work. <laughs> yeah, so he'll, he'll have to be casting it for blue-blue. 
jousting stand. But even so, I think you're okay with that, you know. Yeah, I really love the design that they made it like blue, blue, or Simic, Simic to like just like you can't just throw it in your deck if you're not if you're not Simic. Like there's deck building considerations to having this effect in your deck. Exactly. Well, not too much here. Waxway Witness. I mean, you know, it had its moments. He's looking if he has life gain here, aside from the life greed duo. Yeah, yeah, if, you don't, if you don't have life gain, it's probably not good enough. If you can gain, like, you know, in Bloomberg, when you had, like, two Waxway and three life grid duos, you know, that thing was attacking for, for three or four every turn, but otherwise, not really a good rate. Yeah, I agree. He does seem to be trying to pick up, ooh, now that's a card I'm interested in splashing too, I think, especially if he can pick up a couple other sources of life gain. Yeah, if you can gain the life, it's good. Otherwise, it's not. So he he immediately highlighted it. I mean, run away together, Pearl of Wisdom, or whatever cards are not yeah. replaceable. I mean, even just throwing down a 3-5 with Flying and Vigilance will kind of stall. Yeah. I mean, the effect is rather unique, so... I think they should keyword that effect. Uh, when whenever that happens, you torment of hailfire one. Wow! Oh yeah, that okay. was the uh, yeah. Torment. Oh, well, I mean, we, we we said that the other players may just pick up this this fish and whether they run it or not. And now he's starting to think about it. I mean, it's a lot to uh, it's a lot to consider, but I mean, there's nothing else to take here. He's also uh, he's basically. He, yeah, he immediately put it away in the sideboard. So uh, if if it's something he can make use of, he'll he'll come back to it. But for now, he's uh, it's not really a consideration. Splash! I, know I think he's doing a creature type check. How many of these do I have? <laughs> <laughs> Might be useful. Who knows? I mean, uh, he's got a bird. He's got a few birds. That's about it. That's yeah, a problem. couple of birds. Bounces pawn profit. Yeah. All right, so uh, we're almost halfway through the draft here. We're heading into MKM, where the white-blue was mostly focused on uh, a lot of detective cards, but a lot of them had Investigate, which is just a good mechanic and also produces artifacts for his cards that care about that. All right. He's met it's with a, uh, a very strong rare in Kellen, but uh, his eyes are drawn to the removal of the makeshift binding. Uh, yeah, I think that's reasonable. I mean, Kellen is... is great and actually would probably play well with a lot of his cards but it's you know more constraints on your mana when you haven't really picked up a lot of good fixing yet yeah so he just says uh, i'm already potentially splashing without any fixing yet so why don't i just keep on the train that i'm going on take a, just a premium removal three mana enchantment uh can't go wrong with that gain two life exile something I think this was maybe the first set that we got this effect, which is now just seems to be common in in all the future sets that came out after. But uh, yeah. this began a string like OTJ, Boomboro, and uh, the Duskborn. We, we all get these three mana banishing, basically banishing light. One of them is legitimately banishing light, but funny uh, we've seen them start to exile more stuff too because that one only hit creatures and then the otj one hit creatures and artifacts and then we just straight up got banished that's right. a big gift he can uh he can thank his neighbor thomas who is uh most certainly not in white here passing him the wojek investigator yeah it's great you know he's got he cares about flying he cares about artifacts it does everything what a, what a good, good. <laughs> just cast the card it, it does good things Someone's going to like that Ill-Timed Explosion, too. That's a pretty powerful card. Yeah, Ill-Timed Explosion, very, very good. Also, make sure finding there. So the whoever whoever is white down the line is going to be getting a card they're happy with as well. He's starting to, you know, he's starting to look through his cards. Does this do what I want it to do? Splash Portals, just click that out of there. The unfortunate thing about stuff that makes clues is they're not artifacts themselves for a staunch crewmate to find. But... Uh, he sees another a fun card here. That was a fun rare, the Coveted Falcon. I don't, I don't think it was incredible, but I mean, it's it's cool. Yeah, Very it's weird. At, highlighted. Yeah. It Very is strange fun. card. When you flip it face up, you can give your opponent any number of permanents and draw a card for each one, and then when it attacks, you can take back one of them. 
So I've definitely uh, seen this card backfire when players are a little too willing to donate more of their lands. <laughs> yeah, I was usually pretty uh, pretty conservative with that, but uh, if you're behind, sometimes you do some weirder stuff with that. He does see this inside source, uh, so three mana, three mana, basically for a two-two and a one-one has been an effect we see in a lot of sets, and it's always fine. I like gold case factor a lot too. I mean, four mana three three flying that replaces itself when it dies is is pretty strong, and it was it was good in murders. It's probably better outside. Yeah, can't, again, can't go too too wrong there. I think he did end up with the inside source. Yeah, I mean, we see it in every set. Sometimes it's in white, sometimes it's in blue, sometimes it's in... It, it, it shows up in all the colors, right? Three mana for a 2-2 two, two, and a 1-1 in some capacity. Yeah. Uh, and it's always perfectly fine. Like, we have one in Duskborn, the blue one, that makes an enchantment token. But it's fine. Yeah, like I said, we see it all the time. And we know what we're getting. That one has a little bonus of pumping up the token. Yeah, I think I, I like this land here. There, the cards in... Dance colors, not really anything to write home about, and I think just getting a little bit of fixing on the board is going to be good if he's looking to splash that black. Yeah, I I, I hate these uh, these lands. Like the, I, they've mostly done away with this design of like attach for any color, but you have to pay a mana when it comes in. It's like uh, <laughs> I don't love it, yeah. but uh, it it does what it says it does. You'd so much rather have an evolving wilds like. 95% of the time. Did he end up taking the investigator? Was that you put a creature... What is it? You return up to one non-land permanent? To, to I think it's, it's six mana, four, four, bad creature. If it's your creature, you investigate, I think. Yeah. I never really wanted to play that in Murders. Yeah, I mean, maybe it'll find find a home here. Crime Stopper Sprite, another card that uh, I always read better than, than I found it played. Because a three mana, two, two flying is not good, and... A three mana two two flying that sometimes done something is better, but in the early turns it's just so so unimpactful. Evidence examiner's got to be a home run for someone. That card seems incredible in draft like this. Yeah, absolutely. Like this card, uh, what is it? you don't have to do anything. It just says play magic. As you play magic, cards up in your graveyard, draw cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I do says, like getting playing the game. He says, "I'll go for the flyer here." Now he sees a land, nice one. So. Nice Definitely a pack me. with nothing to take here. Mass hysteria, you say? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Funny, uh, you know, Wizards made such a big deal about this this uh, list, and actually, Murders is the only set that has one. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> okay, not a card Speaking I was expecting. Of, to see. I mean, Out Cold is just uh, this is one of the best versions of this we've ever seen by far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't be countered, first of all. So, you know, Ward Ward doesn't care. Tap two, put a stun counter, draw a card. I mean, like, we get versions of this where we get some of these effects, but this is just full out, everything's there. Can't go wrong with it. I would like to see someone cast show and tell. I know that no one's going to put it in their deck, but I'm optimistic anyway. <laughs> yeah, show and tell, put in a Doomsday Excruciator. Yeah. Well, wait, what I'm playing Desmond. Uh, oh, yeah, wrong set. Yeah. <laughs> What else we got? I know Worms, Worlds by Worms on the list for the set, you know. So maybe, maybe someone's lucky enough. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we got another Hotshot Investigator. It would be hard to believe he's going to play two of them. Behind the Mask just did not have a place in the format, really. Yeah. You're, you're not likely to play two, but you're also less likely to play anything else from this pack. Yep. So just take it. I mean, I'm likely to play it, but. You do. I mean, dramatic accusation is a perfectly fine card. Yeah, it's removal. It's not good removal, but it's it's serviceable. Well, he, here is mine's ticking. He says, "How many enchantments do I have?" Oh wait, zero. <laughs> he looked at the case file auditor. Went to go check his enchantments. I think he has one. He has the next shift binding. Yeah, that that that's uh, asking to play a three minute one four that does nothing at all. Yeah. All right. He's not on board with that, but he's on board with the uh, dramatic accusation. It's removal, slightly clunky, but I mean, it gets the thing off the board, which blue often can't. Yeah. Burden of proof, maybe is fine. Um, it's I mean, yeah, it's flash. It loses abilities. I think does it lose abilities, yeah. or does it just make it a one one? It makes it a one one that mm -hmm. can't block. I believe mm -hmm. it's okay. Yeah, if you need it, you need it. Uh, I imagine Dan will be able to pick up a couple more decent pieces of removal. 
Yeah, but it's an analyst like, here. Maybe he plays it, maybe he doesn't. I'm curious. Sankaru is actually interesting with how many flyers he's got. Oh, there's my uh, my soapbox card of the set coming last pick, <laughs> Goblin Mask Maker. Enough said. Uh, well, especially in in a mega draft, it's not not to be used, but in my opinion, never never really to be used at all. <laughs> all right, we got MH three here, which uh, probably is uh, the highest power level that, that we saw here. OTJ close, I would say, but uh, those two, which are coming here back to back, now that we're more than halfway through, are uh, really gonna really going to impact the players a lot, I think. Their decks are going to... We're going to see a lot of MH3 and OTJ cards cast today, I think. Oh, yeah. So, the, the rare is not... I mean, it's fine. You don't love to have your rare be Amphibian down for. I think I'm looking at either the Steep Analysis or Razor Grass Ambush for Dan. Yeah, Razor Grass Ambush, basically, you know, put it, putting that in a land slot is just such an advantage. Such right. an advantage. Like, how much better is this than a land? Like, infinite. Like, if you can't even... Can't even compute how much better it is than a land, right? When, okay. when you take like a regular playable card, like how much better is that card than like a card that misses your deck? It's not a huge difference. But the difference between this and a basic land is like unspeakable. I actually, I I don't like the design of a lot of the MDFCs from the set because I think they're actually too good. I yeah. think the 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 thing about the Zendikar ones was. Oh, I usually wouldn't play this card, but because it's a land on the back, I'm okay with it. Now it's like, I'd play this card and it's a land on the back, upside. All right, so he did end up taking the um, the Amphibian Downpour. Now he comes across it. my um, another Soapbox card of mine, the Volatile Storm Drake, which uh, I wasn't a fan of, but looks like he is. So We've also got the uh, the Boogeyman of MH3 in, in this pack here, which... Yeah, it was the Rising Crystals, I mean... The group Outside. player will play it in their deck and it'll be good, but it's not going to be uh, as menacing. You're not going to be making, you know, a, a ton of extra spawn to to work with it, you know. Yeah, if you ever want to see somebody lose the game by casting a volatile storm drake, MH3 top eight mega draft. <laughs> it's there. That was uh, that was one for the books. <laughs> oh, you put this uh, storm drake here. Cool. I'm going to make a bunch of copies of. Yep. Springheart and Antuco, let me hold you hostage until you kill this. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was Michael B in the finals, and it, it led to him winning the Mega Draft. Yeah, so uh, again, he takes it. I mean, it, it has its moments. Hopefully, he'll uh, he'll he'll have it show its good moments today. Uh, Copy Crook. I mean, yeah, we like this is just this is a rare in basically any any standard set nowadays. Like this this card's a rare, but. Ended up being uncommon in MH3. It was actually not a huge player in the format. But, I mean, when you read this card, it's extremely strong. Every time I see that Orem's chan, I think, like, there's got to be someone that wants to play that. But I never did in Modern Horizons. Like, it seems like it should be good. But, uh... Well, I, I had it cast that... against me exclusively in games that I won. <laughs> <laughs> Singing the Super, Super is like... just another one of those. Like, it's just too good for, for what it is. Angel of the Runes is... Powerful. It's an artifact. It's interactive. It has a buyout clause if you don't get to seven. And I think he wants to up the power level of his deck a bit. He does not really have a top end, so he's been focusing on taking the lower end of his deck. But uh, so this this gives him the room to maneuver and uh, potentially take a seven drop. But uh, now moving back to the sink into stupor, maybe he's uh, you know. I don't know about that kite. Surely not. Yeah, I think the kite's a bit worse than the other ones. Like. By taking a lot of twos and threes, he, like I said, left himself open to take a seven drop, especially one that offers a, you know a good deal of power. But kind of like what we said with the Razorgrass ambush, which he didn't take, the Sink into Super just offers you so much more than the card it's replacing. Exactly. Triton Wavebreaker was not uh, a good performer in uh, in the set. I mean, Hex Gold Slit. This is not going to be uh, good outside of energy, which I can't really have. So, uh, I mean, draw three cards for five mana. Hex Gold Slip is, you know, Hex Gold Slip is a perfectly fine two drop. It's just not going to be quite as good as it was. Not sure if he's moused over Cephalid Coliseum because he wants it or because he's reading it for the first time, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, expect unworthy. I think it was a little worse than I thought it was going to be, but it is, it is a, a good card like it i thought it was going to be unplayable uh when i first read it, i was like wow this is sort of supply shares but it has like 45 downsides on it um 
which turns out is still like a fine card because that's just how good Source of Splashers is. It gets the thing. It gets the thing gone. It's uh, you, you know you, you're paying a cost to get it gone, but it gets it gone. Yeah, I don't hate Envoy of the Ancestors either, but you know I think Dan sees that he's maybe lacking a bit in removal. Maybe he yeah, wants he a. He really doesn't removal. have that many ways to modify his creatures. Oh, it's that's my boy. He's, oh, uh, he's mouse no over with excitement. Maybe he uh, hey, senses, out, yeah. <laughs> senses my excitement. No need for further comment. Just take it. Move on. Lovely. I mean, it's kind of interesting here. I mean, this is a card that you don't need to have an energy deck to make use of this, right? This is play a one four, put an exalted counter on one thing. I mean, it's it's probably worth worth a a deck slot. It's not going to be insane, but you know, if I had a lot of flyers, I'd play a three mana one four that had exalted on it. You know? Yeah. I think he's uh, he's coming to that conclusion that this card probably stands on its own. Yeah, I mean, certainly better than Aether Spike on its own, which is just straight up quench. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a quench, quench hater. Wow. That's a gift. Okay. We like that. Deep. This is, it's got to be. Dan's got to be happy about that. I mean, it's a four for one. I mean, Dan, Dan must be uh, absolutely ecstatic to see that. No, uh, you know, we know, we know. Dan likes drawing cards. I mean, yeah, and one card that that puts four cards in your hand. That's not. A, that's not an effect that we're going to see very often. And it's not asking oh, you a lot. Oh, we got a stack's disconnected. Oh, we're good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so he's uh, he's happy about that. He says, who are these seven people that don't want to draw cards? Right. They don't want to play. They don't <laughs> want to draw cards. Here's our, our our favorite 2024 design, blue creature with a reach, petrifying nightmare. <laughs> well, no, it's not really blue. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But, I mean... There's that works I mean, this is, it's, it's a good effect. I mean, putting a stun counter on something is great. And this one is very, very large. Yep. Usually it's a 4-4 four, four that, that, that does this. Okay, so Dan grabbing this Orm's Chant, you know, I, I don't expect him to actually put it in his back. But, you know, don't take, man. We just got to, uh, what's going on? All right. Yeah, Orm's Chant, uh, I mean, he's looking at it. It hasn't gone to the sideboard yet, but... Uh, Scott, I, Scott potential. Maybe. I I can't recommend uh, playing that card, but he 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 didn't ask me for a recommendation. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of note, Dan was my uh, opponent last year, so he did make it to the Player of the Year finals last year. So he's, he's he he was one win away, and he's he's looking to to get that get that coveted spot this year. All right. All right. So right the Thunder Junction, probably the the pack that's giving MH3 the most competition for, for most powerful. Yeah, I mean, I see a nice two-drop here. The uh, the Prairie Dog was pretty nice. Good on turn two, good late. There were some games that really just came to a halt until somebody was able to answer this. Yeah, for sure. And I, I, as far as OTJ packs go, I mean, this one's probably on the lower end of power level. You got some cards you're just never really happy to run. But I mean, getting a Prairie this feels good. I mean, we got my boy, the Vault Plunder. Somebody's going to be happy with the Red Rare. The Unfortunate Accident is premium. Uh, the rest of the cards, there's there's a bunch of playables. Our classic two ma three mana, two, two, and a one, one, uh, this time in red. <laughs> yep. I mean, that yeah. one was nice. That interjection, you know, gave I, you those mercenaries. I think the one, one mercenary is like one of the better versions we've seen. Oh, yeah. It's certainly better than a one with no text. I mean, having that ability to kind of Push damage in is nice, and they they count for outlaws. Yep. I mean, here he's just taking this, uh, I was going to say dog, but it is in fact a squirrel. And uh, another rock-solid two-drop here, the Trained Arax. I mean, this card just, this card is a snowball on turn two type of card. It's like a three-power first strike on turn two. Obviously, it's not first strike all the time, but it's not really that hard to saddle it. And, and that's really tough to deal with and you scry which for the aggressive decks is just like a, a an aggressive deck getting to scry when their evasive creature attacks is just so much more valuable than like you know a mid-ranger controlling deck getting to do that exactly yeah because they need specific cards to, to push through and uh i mean just train arcs excellent common can't can't go wrong it's another one that when you when you draw it late in the game it might have an attack right user removal on a four four and it's free to attack potentially. So, card that does maintain its usefulness throughout the game. 
And it's a cat. What's well, not to love, right? Absolutely. It's got to be marauding his things. Like, yeah, it was got a nice five drop here. And again, he did it like, you know, taking the low drops and not filling up the high end of his curve means that he gets to just take the best five drops now instead of having to scramble for, for two drops when t if he took a bunch of five drops earlier. So it's the benefit yeah. by playing the, the Marauding Sphinx, which again, serve L2 whenever you, whenever you target something. Just great. I mean, that was the reason in Thunder Junction to play blue when it wasn't as good. Yep, that was one of the pulls into blue outside of rares. Uh, Holy Cow again, another just rock solid card here. Can't really go wrong. I think we're going to see, you know, a lot of people might be struggling against this deck with, with how many flyers he's been picking up. It yeah, seems the, like... the artifact cards, I think, are not looking great. Like Staunch Crewmate and Wailing Pirates are looking kind of weak. Uh, oh, oh, wow. wow. All right. Four That's people passed this card. That yeah. is, uh, does that mean we got four non-blue players uh, coming this direction? I mean, you'd see it a lot in Thunder Junction where this card would go kind of late because blue wasn't as strong that it doesn't play into a lot of archetypes people want to play into but i think in a mega draft setting that card's got to be great i mean it'd be very fitting if he wins the player of the year thanks to the world champion of magic from last year so <laughs> it's got nathan Stroyer on his side uh, he still hasn't put orange on the sideboard I'm, I'm i'm trying to send send wavelengths to him telling him don't do it but we'll see I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, Bandit, a card that i felt was a bit under performer in uh OTJ, but I, I don't see how this card could be bad in my draft. It's just pay three mana, and then you get a clone at any point in the game. I think this is actually his third clone also, because he's got uh, that copy crook, and he's got um, the self-reflection from LCI. I think I think he, he, he put the self-reflection in the sideboard pretty early on, but... Uh, really? Yeah, I mean, great card. I would be very excited if Dan played Orm's Chant, because I want to see a good player use it. Yeah. I will say, uh, Jailbreak Scheme was one of my... I, I, I thought that card was underrated from day one till the format ended. I got those very late, and just three mana put something on top of the library. is just, just actually really good rate. So, and, so, and sometimes you just gave something unblockable randomly, so uh, you know, the pick was pretty clear for him with the Visage Bandit, but I always thought people uh, under underestimated the Jailbreak Scheme. I don't hate grabbing the Soured Springs. I don't know if he's still looking to splash his black removal or he, or he feels comfortable with what he's got, but Soured Springs... doesn't take the land, it's pretty clear he's not playing black. Yeah. Like, those those lands were about as good as they get. They it's commit like the black card. It looks like he moved the black cards out of his uh, out of his deck. But I will say, even if you're not planning to play the black cards, like, that Take the Fall is just such a medium card. I would just take the land and just maybe have it as a as a sideboard plan, if you see some, some you know, a deck with a bunch of bombs that you want to kill. Yeah, and you still got a couple more packs to go. It's, well, what are we on, pack five, right? Uh, this is the second to last. We got Woe coming up after this, and that's going to wrap up the draft. And Woe, uh, I mean, uh, the white-blue deck was uh, legendarily poor in, uh, in Woe, <laughs> yep. but there's still good individual cards you can find. There's uh, another another round for someone who uh, wants to train wreck their mega draft. Who who doesn't want to blink their creatures uh, infinite times while getting killed mercilessly by an opponent who's actually doing something? Yeah, and you can even do it again. There's so you know, two for the price of one. All right. I mean, uh, Aaron's lullaby, very playable removal. Like destroy tap creature, gain two life. Very simple but uh, effective. Yeah, I like it. It's There's situations where it's like, oh man, they played like a laughing Jasper Flint and they're attacking with it, and so I can't really kill it. But most of the time, this is going to do what you want it to do. I mean, you're dying to Jasper Flint in uh, many varieties of, of, of ways. This yeah. <laughs> this removal not killing it being one of them. But Some of those like, value engine bombs that don't attack... It can kind of be awkward to play around, but... Yeah, he's... Uh, I suspect that he's checking. How many instants do I have? Does this Geyser Drake make the cut? What can I do with it? Well, it looked like he... Upon uh, scanning through his sideboard, the fish uh, found its way back in very stealthily. Oh, it did. It looks like he, he maybe is thinking that he's picked up some more blue and can actually get away with casting it. So it makes your it makes your spells cost less, right? Is that... Is that yeah, your, your first right. instant or three cost um, a blue less for each land you have with a flood counter. 
a blue less. So yeah, it actually oh. it's unique in that it reduces the the blue cost on spells. So if you have a you know a card that costs one blue blue, and you got three flood counters, it'll actually be free. Okay, it doesn't have very much double blue, but uh, you know, I mean, he, he he's gotten deep enough in the draft that he knows the di direction his deck is going, and he's uh, identified that that might be a card that he wants. Whereas before it was uh, tucked away in the sideboard. Yeah, rounding out the pack here, we're getting to uh, our last pack, which is Woe. So, again, the white-blue tapping mechanic wasn't very good, and a lot of the cards that tapped were not very good either, but uh, you know, there was still there was still individual strength to be found in those cards. The uh, Dan picking up High Noon and typing Yeehaw Partner into the chat box. There you go. Uh, all right. So we got a 2-2 two -two that, that draws a card here uh, in white. With, uh, with a little adventure mm -hmm. here. I mean, a 2-2 that draws a card is good enough on its own. I mean, there's the Collector's Vault, which had its moments, but I'm looking at Evolving Wilds, personally. Yeah, Evolving Wilds is acceptable. I wouldn't... I mean, I don't hate the Collector's Vault. It's probably pretty good. There's a card I pick in paper, obviously, but uh, there's not a paper draft. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's passing it to Thomas. Thomas, who I've almost only exclusively seen play red aggro decks. Uh, he's passing... <laughs> A, a very good uh, red rare to him, whether he's playing it or right. not. But uh, I can actually look and see what Thomas is doing because I yeah. am in the draft. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah we'll, we'll we'll get an idea afterwards as well going through the pools. But uh, if Thomas is doing what I know he often likes to do, this this Godric will make him very happy. I think Dan's a little sad that he's unlikely to cast the adventure side, but I mean three mana two two that draws a card is uh, perfectly fine on its own. Yeah. Definitely don't hate to run that. Yeah, he does have a Blossoming Sands uh, that he picked up in that Konzatar gear pack, but I'm not sure if he wants to throw it in his deck. I mean, uh, yeah, this is sort of the white-blue problem here. A lot of the cards just, you know, aren't that great. He's hovered Griffin area. I don't... I can't imagine he has enough ways to trigger that. Um... Looks like he's going through and checking now. I mean, I, mean, I don't hate... Yeah. Of note, the High Noon is in his deck currently. I mean, his deck has 57 cards in it, so he has to, he has to cut almost half of, <laughs> of what he has here. Right. So, uh, once it comes to deck building. But uh, looks like he's potentially going for the Counterspell or the Removal. Uh, he does yeah. have a bunch of stuff that makes incidental artifacts. So Kellen's Light Blades could be a card that he, uh, he finds desirable. I don't hate the Aquatic Alchemist either. I mean, that card wasn't great in WoW, but I think that's more to the fact that blue is just bad as color. Yeah, that card always felt like dopey to me. It's just like, what am I doing playing this? It's just it's like both halves of it are just cards that I don't usually want to play. But uh, he did take the Light Blades, it looked like. Reasonable. Moving on here again, this this WoW bonus sheet. I think this was like by far the worst bonus sheet ever. <laughs> just so many yeah. unplayables. <laughs> There, there were maybe, like, ten cards I was happy to run, and then, like, a whole bunch of reprints for Commander. <laughs> I think ten is a, is a hard number. <laughs> but uh, there were a few good ones. I mean, Bitter Blossom and and uh, yeah. and the like. It's Not really game. wanting anything from this pack. He immediately went to the Crystal Grotto. He's now deciding if he wants to take something else. I mean, if you're playing two colors, I find this card is not great. I like it, the... The scryer sometimes it's been surveil, but it's kind of nice to like fit, um, filter your draws a little bit. But not often you're going to need that mana fixing, really. Yeah, the scry uh, often for me doesn't make up for the, the effect that it has on the mana base. And then coming to a similar conclusion, he is taking that the aquatic alchemist. Like it's a perfectly serviceable, fine two drop. Someone's going to be special, but. Yeah, I mean, looking at the Picklock Prankster here, I mean, yeah. If you can draw a card off of that, it's premium card. If not, I think he's, he's like, hey, how many do how many fairies do I have? The answer is uh, probably none. <laughs> not too too many. But yeah, just a bunch of solid creatures he has here. Again, the staunch crewmate's still sticking out a bit, like a sword thumb. Return Triumphant is a pretty unique effect, and this is uh, 
getting getting a, a roll token attached to it is uh, very very nice as well. Yeah, it's kind of a lot of like you know three drop flyers that are likely to be two twos. So yeah. having a a young hero on one of those is probably pretty nice. Yeah, put that on the jackdaw savior, and uh, you are you are looking pretty nice. He's, he's kind of hovering his creatures, seeing the, the power toughness on him. Yeah, I think, I mean, that that effect, which we now get at common pretty frequently, has turned out to be just usually pretty good. Like, you don't, you, you don't want more than one normally, but the first copy is perfectly good. Speaking of bonus sheet cards, I'm happy to play. Yeah, Stab Wound is nice. Yeah, I see the the water wings, which uh, we didn't know what it did last time. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it gave, I thought it uh, somebody it gave flying. It turned it. We we just didn't even know. I thought it gave hexproof. It turned something into a flyer. Uh, who knows? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of these like blue effects that are like pay some mana, turn your creature into a bigger creature until it's turn, and they all have like varying side effects. Yeah, I thought it gave hexproof, so I was. I was operating as if it did and misread the whole thing. But uh, Armory Mice, uh, not a card that usually makes the cut here. It's, uh, it's a 3-1 that, that wants to be a 3-3, kind of like Nettle Guard from uh, Bloomborough. Yeah, surprisingly, he hasn't picked up any of these uh, the blue top or bottom effects here, and uh, now's the time uh, that he's going to grab one. He reads to come to the cold, and, and then you read... Out cold, and you're like, wow, they really printed that at uncommon. Yeah, how's that, get... how's that a card that that, that, that we accept? <laughs> well, it'd be too good for the blue white archetype, the one that was really good in that set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> misleading. Well, yeah, misleading modes. I mean, like these effects have just become. We basically have come to expect them in every set, and uh, they're fine. Picking up the first one here seems good with only a few picks left. I mean, let's, how... let's see how curious. Uh, Dan's feeling today. Yeah, I don't know. With a lot of flyers, he's already got that one curiosity from murders. I don't hate it, honestly. Yeah, it's 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 still in his pile. The curious inquiry, you know. Yeah, and this one's better because the curious inquiry, you you then have to sack the clues. This one, you just get your cards immediately. Yeah, curious inquiry, I believe, does give a power and toughness boost, but uh, sure, you, you do have to pay mana to draw. I mean, right. uh, these are these are cards that that promise a lot and deliver quite less than they promise usually. But uh, if he has the right deck for it, he'll he'll come to the right decision and uh, slot those in. Yeah, it's not really anything there for him. Yeah, he was so uh, he did a he did a pretty pretty solid mega draft strategy. Get into one color, put feelers into another until you get your until you get your your signals and in LCI the Master's Guide mural kind of uh, and the Lodestone Needle coming in the middle of the pack sort of pushed him towards the deck that he ended up drafting even though he's not heavy on artifacts. These were open colors, open enough for him to get good cards. Picked up a couple of nice rares like the Investigator, Wojak Investigator and the uh, Starfall Invocation and uh, has himself a pretty capable uh, deck here. Hopefully yeah. for him capable enough to win Player of the Year. Looking forward to see what he'll build out of it. Yeah, there's a yeah, there's there's a few cards that I, I'm looking at. I'm like, is he gonna play it? Is he not? Uh, Eluge, Orange Chant, the curious uh, <laughs> curiosity effect. So let's let's see. Let's see where this I want goes. To yeah, even if it's not maybe not the right decision, I want to see Orange Chant get played. Uh, if, if, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just I I just can't I just can't see that that being desirable but like i said he he may have a vision of this deck and uh it includes having that effect at his uh, disposal potentially so we have concluded the mega draft we'll be back shortly to review the pools so uh we'll see everybody in a few minutes for that one